Good morning, class. Welcome to Dark Souls 101. I am your teacher, Mr. Snyder. Have a seat right there and turn to page three. We'll be starting off the course with the beginning of Dark Souls. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to Everyday Nerd Souls Edition. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today's the first episode in a long-running series of episodes about the Souls series. I first played Dark Souls about four years ago, and it's remained as one of the most memorable games I've ever played. And recently, I wanted to revisit it to talk about it on Your Everyday Nerd. And while I could easily have just done a single episode on it, I realized that this is also easily a game I could talk about for a very long time. So buckle up, get comfortable, because we're about to tackle the entire Souls series piece by piece, starting with 2011's Dark Souls. While technically the Souls series started in 2008 with Demon Souls on the PS3, I still need to play that, and I've been really itching to play Dark Souls again. So, since the remastered version just came out at the end of last year, we're gonna start there. The goal of these episodes is to review and discuss each of the main areas throughout the series. We are dwelling into spoiler territory, so if you've never played the game and you don't wanna be spoiled, definitely go play it first and then you can come back. But the way that I am covering this series, you can basically play Dark Souls along with me. So go play a little bit of it, come back, and that way we can have even more discussions here. If you're not interested in the series, you can still stick around and hear me gush about a game that I love. Hopefully I can still make it just as entertaining as any other Your Everyday Nerd. And who knows, maybe you'll even grow to appreciate this game as much as I do. So let's get into it. Dark Souls released in 2011 by From Software. It originally was on PS3 and Xbox 360. They made a PC port. The PC port is, eh, I played it. There's a lot of frame rate dips in certain areas in the game. And you definitely don't want to use mouse and keyboard because it's really bad. In 2018, we did get Dark Souls Remastered though. It came to all major consoles, including PC. And that is the version that I am playing. I do intend to 100% this game in terms of bosses and areas. Originally, when I first went through it, I didn't do the DLC. There were a couple of areas I didn't go to. For the most part, I did a lot of it. I just didn't do everything. I want to experience everything this game has, so that's what we're going to do. Dark Souls is a very complicated game because most people know this game as, oh, that's a very hard video game. But at the end of the day, it's not really the difficulty that makes this game stand out to me. Instead, it's the world building, the use of narrative, the extensive lore, and it's rewarding and well thought out gameplay. And that's really just the tip of the iceberg. Its difficulty is just part of the experience. It encourages you to be more careful and thought provoking as you make your way through this world that has been abandoned and take on some of the most powerful foes ever imaginable. So yes, Dark Souls is hard, but it's also very fair. Unlike a lot of those old NES games that had spawning enemies randomly and walls that could hurt you and two hits and then you're dead. This is a game that rewards you for playing by its rules. It is a fair game. And that's pretty much all I'm gonna say about its difficulty because at the end of the day, I do wanna focus on each area in the game. Almost as if they were their own individual games because I fully believe that for the most part, each area in Dark Souls has something very interesting that's worth talking about. While the world of Dark Souls is filled with complexity and mystery, its opening cutscene explains this world brilliantly. This world is ancient, filled with dragons and monsters. Nothing ever died. One day, fire was born and four lords were created. These lords challenged the dragons of the world, destroying all of them and starting the Age of Fire. But fire always goes out eventually, and that brings us to the present day. You, the player, are the hero that is able to conquer souls, destroy giants, neither kindle the first flame and begin the Age of Fire once more, or you can let the flame fade and create the Age of Dark. So, you wake up in a prison cell in the Northern Undead Asylum. This is the tutorial of the game, this is the area we're focusing on today, and it's arguably one of the best tutorials I've ever seen in a video game. Ever. The Undead Asylum allows you to gather your senses, slowly but surely finding your way to essential items, learning to fight both easy and more difficult enemies, and eventually you find yourself able to beat the first boss. I personally love the opening to this game. 
While many games just usually equip you with all your gear before you fight the boss, Dark Souls does the opposite. It brings you to a big open room and shows you, or, or rather drops in, the Asylum Demon. A big behemoth with a big ass that if you're not prepared for, will probably stomp the shit out of you. All you have is a broken sword hilt, and depending on what class you chose in the character creation thing, you could technically have some other items to defeat him, but most likely, all you have is this broken sword hilt, and it's still not going to be easy regardless. Either way, Dark Souls shows you your first goal. Defeat this dude they do give you the ability to leave the area. Unfortunately for me, I thought, oh, it's the first boss, Dark Souls is supposed to be hard, I'm gonna go ahead and fight him with this sword hilt, and uh, it took me like 30 minutes to realize that, oh, there's a door over there. So, you exit, and eventually you find your way to a knight. This is the guy that gives you a key, as well as the Estus Flask, your healing item in the game. This is also where you learn that you do have choices throughout the game that most games don't give you. This is a friendly NPC, and one that just gave you essential items, and yet, you can technically kill him. Is this a smart decision? I'll leave that for you to decide. Eventually, you find your way back to the boss, this time from above, allowing you to jump onto his back and get rid of a huge amount of his health. The rest of the fight is fairly easy, you just stay behind his thick ass and shove your sword in there. I didn't mean to say that out loud. The Asylum Demon is a fine fight, definitely challenging without your gear but doable if you're willing to fight for 30 minutes without actual weapons. He, he's got a few different attacks, all of which are mostly avoidable if you stay behind him. His design works for a first boss. He's definitely intimidating, and his size alone is something that makes for a very memorable boss fight. It's also important to talk about the music in this game. For the majority of your playthrough, there will be absolutely no music. Instead, the game waits until you're in a boss fight before it slams your senses with loud, orchestrated music, so you can just be a little bit more stressed out. Fortunately, the Asylum Demon track is a good one, and we do end up hearing it a couple times in other bosses, because it's reused for some reason. But either way, I, I do very much like the music in this game. But this marks the end of the Asylum, at least for now. What's particularly interesting about this area is that there are a couple of doors you can't go through yet, there are items that aren't reachable yet. It's clear that you're not quite done with this area, so you will be able to return much later in the game. And while the developers did do a great job of creating this tutorial, the return back to the Undead Asylum isn't quite as good in my opinion, but we'll talk about that again in a later episode. But that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go hit that like button. If for a reason you didn't like it, you can hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are on this series. I'm really excited to do a lot of Dark Souls. I've been playing it on my own again. It's been really fun. I, I really do love this series and I'm hoping you guys will appreciate all the videos on it. Anyways, go ahead and subscribe for more Everyday Nerd and I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.